Welcome to Crafted Carvings. My name is Jennifer. I haven't done a video in a little while for this channel, um, so I thought I would do one today on equipment for your shop. Now, I consider the shop that I have right now pretty much my dream shop. There really isn't too much that I feel like I'm lacking. But I want to encourage you that you do not have to start off with an 8 inch by, I think it's about 60 inch <laughs> table. Um, I started off with just a 24 inch um, joiner and maybe it was like three inches in depth. But whereas that smaller planer is good for smaller pieces of wood because you want to have um, you know, support on one side and then it goes over to the other side. If it's too long, then you're not going to get a completely flat surface. So as I was making money on my signs, then I would reinvest it into my equipment. So the very first one, as I said, was it was just a 24 inch bench top joiner. And um, I think it was maybe only about $30. I then went up from the 24 inch to a 36 inch and I had that for a little while and then I went up to four feet. That was like a whole you know, floor length one. It was a, a four foot bed, so two feet on one side, two feet on the other. And it was six inches deep. And then finally, um, moving out here to California, I did not bring that uh, the 48 inch by, um, by six inch joiner and I got this one over here and uh, this one is eight inch is in depth and it's good 60 inches across and it can do rabbiting this one it still has uh, the original blades on it where they're like three blades that rotate you can get spiral or, or helical head blades which I'm really looking forward to, to doing that upgrade so that, that's one thing I would like to do to improve this but it took me a little while to get this level from one side to the other and you do that with a lot of patience and reading the manual so I had shims that I had to put in to the little crevices here so that this was completely flat and there's two ways that it, it can it can torque so if this is your bed for the joiner you can have it uh, have it have a problem this way which of course is bad but you can also have a problem going this way which is also bad so making sure that your joiner, when you were buying a used one, making sure all of that is correct is a process. And I'm not going to go into all of that here because I'm happy with it and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch it. Um, now the other side of the table has the ability to go up and down. So your depth of cut, how much you're gonna be taking off on each side. So I have automatic lights and if I am, still for too long then my shop lights go out and that's because I had this horrible habit of leaving my shop lights on so now it's like set to five minutes so saving electricity. Alright so your other side of your joiner bed, oh, I'm planer, joiner bed uh, has a uh, turn screw here that you can adjust your height and you really don't want to go anything more than about an eighth of an inch but you can go a heck of a lot smaller increments than that so that you can make sure that your surface is completely flat. Now, why would you want to use a joiner? Well, purpose of a joiner is that when I go over to my circular saw, if I have a very warped piece of wood, then I'm not going to get a very straight cut on the other side. So I need to have one side to be completely straight, and I put that against the fence, and then I can cut with the table saw, I can cut the other side. The other reason why I use my joiner is because I have had the occasion to make really big signs that involves edge gluing several pieces together. So in that case, I'm going to join it on one end, so I have one end completely flat. Then I'm gonna take it to the table saw and I'm gonna cut the other side. Now that other side is still gonna be a little, little rough because the, the blade on the table saw is not quite as fine but you still need to do that process because if you just join one edge and then you flip it and you join the other edge, these edges, they may not be parallel. 
So by using the table saw, you're going to make sure that you're going to start off with parallel sides, and then you can take, come and take it over to the to the joiner, and you can go ahead and make sure that that other side is as smooth as possible, and then you can edge glue them. And then depending on how big the sign is, um, I might put biscuits in there or dowels in there in between the two pieces so that when I edge glue it and I clamp it all together, it gives it a bit more strength. But those are uh, two good reasons to use a joiner. The other reason is is that when you have a surface planer or a thickness planer, uh, rather is where you s stick it through and it takes a lot off the top. Um, if your board, if your board is is warped at all, but it still has some springiness to it, when you put it through a thickness planer, it's going to squish it, plane off the top. But then when it comes out the other side it's still going to go back to being a little wonky. So you can build a sled for your thickness planer so that you're kind of supporting where it's wonky so that it won't push it down and it just kind of takes it off the top there. Or so long as it's less than the width of your joiner you can just plane one side of it. And by planing the one side of it then you're going to have a flat side and when you take it over to your planer it's not going to get pushed down and then spring back up. When you go through, it will just take off the material on the top. And so then you're going to have an evenly thick board that you can, you can do stuff with. So that's the other reason why you can use a joiner. And the reason why people will get wider and wider. Um, I most of the time don't need to worry too much about that. So I mostly use it for edge joining. So I don't really need the 8 inch, but I needed the length because I have some longer boards. Um, and I have seen these up to um, 12 inches. Um, I think they make them even bigger, but then you're getting into like really, really big joiners and I don't have that much room. And I really, as I said, don't really have that much of a need for doing the surface part of, uh, of doing that, that kind of surface planing on that. So anyhow, I hope that helps in terms of explaining the purpose of a joiner in your shop and also encourages you that you can start small, get them used. There's always people that are upgrading, especially when you're starting out. You can find those smaller ones because people are gonna outgrow them. But if you're just starting out, buy it up real cheap. Don't spend a whole lot of money in the store because you're gonna outgrow it too. You'll get to, to know what you like about it. Start off with small projects. And then as you make money on it, you sell that one and then you get a bigger one. And Again, this is like the fourth or fifth one that I've had because that's what I've been doing is just upgrading it as I go along. And I think I'm pretty much good with this. The only thing I want to make it better with is replacing that head with the helical head. And that's probably going to cost about as much as I paid for the whole thing because those are hard to find used. I'm going to buy a new helical head and that's probably going to be about $350 to $400. And that's about how much I paid for this thing. So anyhow, there goes my lights again. So I think it's time to stop. And I will talk to you next time. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video uh, and think that uh, others that may have a, a need for knowing about equipment, hit the like button. Please subscribe and send me a comment and let me know what other piece of equipment you would like to have a description on. I've got all sorts in here and I don't know where to go next. So let me know your thoughts. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.